In this code demonstration, we're going to take a look at a good alternative to using a watch uh, in AngularJS. Now, in order to do this code demonstration, you have to make sure that you have AngularJS added to your web page, as you can see here. Um, I've loaded it up from a popular CDN. However, you can download it to your local web application and reference it from there as well. Now, if we scroll down here, you're going to see a very simple form. Um, basically, we have our ng app, our ng controller, and then we have this uh, this input control with the ng model directive um, being bound to the message uh, property of the scope variable. So if we come down here to our code, we're going to see where we have an Angular module and our controller, and then we have dollar sign scope dot message set to initial message. Now, if we switch to our web browser, we're going to see where we have our input box is populated with that initial message. Now the first thing we're going to do is actually take a look at how we can observe changes to this message using the traditional watch approach. So I'll come in here and do scope dot dollar sign watch like this and then I'm going to specify message and then we're going to have a function here that's going to have new value and old value and we're going to output these values to the console. So we'll say console.log new value. And then we'll say new value here. And then we'll do something similar for old value. And we'll save that and go back over to our web page and we'll reload. And we'll see we have the initial message. Remember, all watches run um, at least one time after they're created. And now we'll come in here and actually edit this message. And we'll see how, as we edit it, we can kind of see the new value and the old value as we're deleting. And we can type stuff in there, stuff like that. And we'll see the, the value actually update there in the console log. OK. So that uses a watch. And basically, each time we type into the box, the digest loop fires, it, ex ex it executes the comparison function. If it's changed, it outputs the new and old value. It then executes the comparison function again to make sure it hasn't changed again in another digest iteration. And it does that for every single time we type in a character. So basically, it's three function calls. But let's say that we want to capture the change of message, but we really don't want to experience the pain of three function calls in terms of performance for our application. So jumping back over to our text editor over here, instead of using a watch, we can use another technique. I'm going to comment out watch here. Now down here, I have a directive. This directive is named myDir, and this directive basically uses ng models controller to hook into the parsers array. Now the parsers array has a has functions in it that get executed every single time the value on the view um, for a particular scope property changes. So up here we're going to apply our directive to our input element and we're going to say my dash dir and now what's going to happen is every time we type into this box, the updated value is going to be passing through the parser's array of functions. And we're going to push a function on there called log new message. Now log new message is basically going to take the new message and actually output it to the console. So we'll save that. We'll jump back over to our web browser. We'll reload our page. Up, oh, looks like we have a syntax error, line 39. Oh, we have our extra semicolon in there. We can't do our chaining properly if we have a semicolon. So we'll come back here and reload. There we go. So now we have our initial message. Now watch as I type into the box. We don't have access to an old value, but we do get the new value. And notice how each time we do this, we're not having to have the burden of a full-blown watch that we've created. Instead, we're hooking into the actual mechanism for parsing the updated value that Angular already has built in. So a good alternative to actually using watches is to actually add a function into the parsers array that can actually monitor that new value. And when it changes, will actually give us the new value. And then we're able to do something with it with that particular function, thereby saving the three function calls that result with every time we execute a watch.